Hi everyone, MCP announced the streamable HTTP transport protocol. That's a protocol to connect your MCP clients with remote MCP servers over the internet. This replaces the HTTP plus SSE transport from the earlier protocol version. In this step-by-step -step demo, I'm going to take you from a basic understanding of how this works to understanding how streamable HTTP servers are built so that you can build your first streamable HTTP server using fast MCP. And if you're new to my channel, at the AI language, I've helped thousands of students learn about model context protocol. We've also learned about A2A protocol, and I've also helped several hundred students on my Udemy courses, which has received several positive ratings. So I'm sure that you'll find this video extremely useful and learn how to build your first streamable HTTP server using fast MCP. I've created an example streamable HTTP server after building these streamable HTTP servers, we'll add them to the Claude desktop config.json file. For now, Claude desktop does not natively support streamable HTTP servers, so we will be using a library called MCP Remote. It's not an official anthropic library, but it does the job and for now we will be sticking with this. As soon as Claude launches its own native support for streamable HTTP servers, it's recommended that you yourself shift to that particular implementation. Going back to the code, this is going to be super beginner friendly with lots of comments and I'm go, I'll go through all the code over here. And then finally, we are going to start our cloud desktop and we will see that these two streamable HTTP servers are listed over here with both the tools and we'll use this chat to test these servers out. And don't forget, we are going to include all the code which you can actually download and test out for yourself. So with this overview, let's dive into the details of this code the code structure and the files, etc. And then let's go through the code and try to run this. So first let's look at the files and the folder structure. You should check out the code from our GitHub repo and you will get a MCP underscore streamable underscore HTTP root folder. Inside that we have a streamable HTTP server folder with the first implementation, which is a stateless server. This is marked by the one stateless streamable folder. And this implements two servers, server one and server two. Both these are streamable HTTP servers that expose two tools each. So server one exposes an add numbers and subtract numbers tool and server two exposes a multiply and divide numbers tool. The main.py script is used to start the servers individually by specifying the server name as either server one or server two. Now let's look at the code for the server. So we'll go to server1.py and we see that we are creating a fast MCP server over here. So this initializes an MCP server with the properties name, which is set to stateless arithmetic server, host, which is set to local host. Then you have a port, which is by default 3000 for server one and 3001 for server two, but you can specify a port while running this using the main script. And then we enforce the stateless behavior by specifying the stateless underscore HTTP flag equal to true. So this ensures that no session memory is kept between the requests. And this is because we want to cover a basic streamable HTTP server example in this particular lecture. Now let's look at the code snippets for the schema, the input schema and the output schema from the tools. So you see that we define the input schema using Pydantic. This schema validates the inputs passed to the tool. So if, for example, A colon 3.5 and B colon 7.2, these are two double numbers that the tool expects to receive. And you do this by making a class over here, we call it arithmetic input. And this has two variables A and B with type hints specified, which then enables fast MCP to understand what the input schema is. Similarly, we have an arithmetic result, which is the output schema. It's defined in the same way, but over here we have two variables, result and expression. The result is a float which specifies the result of the operation and the expression is the operation that was performed and it's a string. And again, these type hints are what help MCP parse what the output schema is supposed to be like. Next, we are going to look at the MCP tool definition itself. So you can see that we use the decorator at the rate of MCP dot tool to register this function as a callable tool in the MCP server. And the name of the tool is add underscore numbers. It's defined as a Python functions and it takes the input, which is of type arithmetic input 
and then gives us the result after performing the operation, which is of type arithmetic result. The result is simply params.a plus params.b because this is add numbers and this is where we return the arithmetic result. Similar to this, we also have the subtract numbers tool, which is again specified using this decorator. And then uh, you have the operation performed over here, which is params.a minus params.b and the return for the arithmetic result over here. Finally, we are going to look at how to run this server. To do that, we simply call mcp.run with the transport specified as streamable dash HTTP. And this starts the fast MCP server with streamable HTTP transport. It listens on the slash MCP endpoint and responds to JSON RPC requests. There's some exception handling that we do over here. And finally, this is what starts our server. The entire script is executed using the main function. The main function is converted to a CLI command by using click and you can provide the options for port, which specifies which port to run the server on. The default port is 3000. And you can also specify a log level, the default being debug, where you can specify what is the logging level that should be used for all the logging statements that are printed in the console. So that's all for the server code and server two is pretty similar, except that the two tools implement a different logic for multiplying and dividing the numbers. So you can have a look at that and the code is very similar to what we have covered in server one already. So now let's look at the final file, which is main.py, which is the driver for our code. And this is what is used to start both the servers. To begin with, we import server one and server two, their main functions as server one underscore main and server two underscore main. Then again, we have the main function for this particular driver script which is converted into a command line interface entry point using click. The options that are available is to specify the server from two options, server one and server two. And there's a log level again, which defines what logging level we need to use. We then have the beginning of the main functions. The server specified in the log level that is specified while running is used. If the server is server one, we're going to start server one with the same log level argument. And if it is server two, we are going to start server two. And this block ensures that the main function runs only when this script is executed directly. Okay, so now we have covered the major components for the server code and we understand the driver code which starts the server. Before we actually start the server and test it out, let's also look at the Claude desktop config.json file. So this is the Claude desktop config.json file and also include an explanation for how to set this up on Windows. But over here, we specify MCP servers and we specify server one and server two. Server one, we use the command npx because we want to run this MCP remote package. And to this, we provide the server's URL. MCP remote is what helps us connect this server, which is a streamable HTTP server to the Claude desktop client. So as you know, for now, Claude desktop client does not support streamable HTTP and MCP remote is there to solve that for us by allowing this client to connect to the streamable HTTP server that we have created. Similarly, we specify server two, the command is npx. And for the arguments, we basically include the package name MCP remote that helps with the connection. And we include the URL for server two, which is on local host, but on port 3001. Again, the endpoints are both slash MCP. And this is what we set up for the Claude desktop config.json file. All right, so now let's look at starting the servers. To do that, you open a terminal window and shift to the directory where you checked out the code. So I have this checked out in mcp slash mcp underscore streamable underscore HTTP. I'm going to shift to that directory. Let's now activate our virtual environment. So first we're going to run uv space venv. This is going to create the dot venv folder and the virtual environment for us. Now we are going to activate the virtual environment with source.venv slash bin slash activate. Then we can simply install all the packages by typing uv space sync. This is going to set up all the packages for us. Now you can run server one by typing uv run and then entering the active flag for this virtual environment. Then typing the name of the folder, which is streamable HTTP server, and then specifying one dash stateless dash streamable, which is the folder name for our stateless server. 
and then followed by the main script for running that server. We also specify the server flag that we saw earlier and we specify server one as the server that we want to start. Then we specify the log level, which is information only and we press enter. So this is going to start your server on localhost 3000, which is the default port for server one. Similarly, you can open a new terminal window in the same folder and activate your virtual environment. Then type the same command, but specify server two as the server option over here and press enter. And this is going to start your second server on localhost port 3001. Once these two servers are started, we can actually test them with some MCP client that supports streamable HTTP. Right now, we are going to use Cloud Desktop with the help of the package MCP Remote that will help us connect Cloud Desktop to these two servers. All right, so now let's finally test with Cloud Desktop our streamable HTTP server. Just launch Cloud Desktop after setting the desktop config.json file that we just saw. And after that, you're going to see this welcome window. And once you click on the search and tools button over here, you can see two servers are available, each with two tools. The first server has add numbers and subtract numbers, and the second server has multiply numbers and divide numbers. So these are the two tools that are available and we can click on back over here and just ask it to run whatever functions we want. So I'm going to first ask what all tools do you have access to? Okay, and we see that it can successfully list down the tools for math operations, add numbers, subtract numbers, multiply numbers, and divide numbers. All right, so I'll ask it to divide any two random numbers, 513 and three using the tools. So we see that it says I'll divide 513 by three using the division tool, and it sends a request with the params A as 513 and B as three. And the response that it gets is, containing those two class variables that we looked at in the Pythantic model. One is the result, which is 171, which is correct. And then we have the expression, which is 513 divided by three. And finally, it interprets this result and tells us that the result is 171. So 513 divided by three equals 171. So guys, this is amazing. This is the first step that we have taken to build our MCP server, which is a streamable HTTP server. And this is a new protocol that is going to supersede the server sent events protocol with HTTP that was being followed earlier. And what we just looked at is called a stateless server. Next, as we go along in the course, we are going to build an MCP client that can work with both STDIO and streamable HTTP servers. So that's going to be a universal client that we are going to build. And I'm going to come up with the lecture for this soon. And do subscribe to my channel, The AI Language. And I'll see you in the next video.